so I will talk about uh, the new capabilities that can bring laser plasma acceleration uh, into a specific application, which is non-destructive testing. So just a quick presentation about my company, Source Lab. It was founded uh, recently, in 2013. It is uh, the Laboratoire d'Optique Appliqué spin-off. So at the beginning, was it was based on the work of two PhD uh, uh, theses on innovative targetry system for laser plasma science. So our company began by selling various tools and components for laser plasma acceleration, such as gas and solid targets. Today, we are developing uh, secondary sources that, that are integrated into, sorry, that are integrated into a module that you can plug onto your experiments. And in the next few years, we are aiming to develop our own laser plasma accelerators. So uh, there are two main projects at Source Lab today. We're on one part, we are working on for the Eli Apps facility, as we are doing uh, the technical design review of one of the beamline, one of the HEG beamline. So this work is about to finish, I think. The other, the other big project that we are working on is the one that we'll be talking today. So it's the Cheryl project, a project that is undertaken with our partners, the LOA, and PEI, which is a French company uh, speciali specialized in industrial engineering. So this proje project aims to build a first platform, a first X-ray source uh, coming from laser plasma accelerators, which will be dedicated to non-destructive te texting, meaning X-ray radiography. So this first demonstrator will be the proof of concept in order to target a commerci commercialization of this product after 2020. So if you look at the non-destructive non testing market today, it is already done with X-ray source. And it's done in a lot of places, from shipbuilding to aircraft, aircraft industry or construction building. There is a lot of inst installed source, sources today with a, grow a, growing, a, lot, a lot of growth in this market. And it is today covered by three main technologies. We have gamma graphs, which are portable radioactive sources. And of course, we have X-ray tubes and linear accelerators. So those different technologies, those different linear uh, accelerators, sorry, have various properties. But at the end, uh, the final user, users has to choose. And he chooses from three parameters, which are the maximum energy of the beam that will be produce, produced, the resolution of the image that we, we would get, and of course, the cost. So energy is an important parameter because it is equivalent as to say, uh, it will give you the maximum object thickness that you can scan into your laser plasma accelerator. As you can see here on the graph, we consider that with 20, a 20 MeV beam, you can scan an object that goes, that is like one meter of uh, steel thickness. Resolution, uh, the image resolution depends only on the X-ray source size, meaning the source size at the point of focus. Uh, the lower the X-ray source size will be, the lower the size of the defects you will be able to see on your images. So if we take the example of uh, linear accelerators, uh, such as this one, it is very good to generate high energy beam, 15 MeV. That's enough for a lot of applications but it comes at the price of uh, a very weak resolution. The higher the energy we get, the lower the resolution is. And for example, for around 10 to 15 MeV beam, the resolution is higher than mil a millimeter. So that is not enough for uh, the industry. So I won't explain uh, this slide, but obviously laser plasma acceleration is very interesting to generate uh, energetic particles with very good properties, which are high energy, but also a small source size, because the source size depends only on the focus area of the beam and your target, which is here a gas target. 
So by combining laser plasma acceleration, you generate an electron beam that you propagate through a tantalum uh, a converter, which can be either from tantalum or tungsten, meaning a high density metal. You will obtain Bernstrom effect and therefore uh, an X-ray beam which has about the same energy as your electron energy. So this work has already been done at the LOA, at Palaiso, uh, more than 10 years ago. So the numbers that you see here, meaning that uh, for the Sherry, we based the Sherry project on those performance obtained 10 years ago, which are having a wide spectrum from one to 20 MeV while keeping a source, an X-ray source size around 50 micrometers. So uh, as you can see here, this is a 3D uh, rendering of the Sherry demonstrator that is currently being installed at the LOA, as it looks today. So uh, our facility is divided into two levels. On the top, we have the laser room, so that contains a 10 terawatt laser system made of a Titan Sapphire uh, CPA chain working at, working at 10 hertz. After the beam is compressed, it is sent below uh, toward inside the interaction chamber here where the X-ray beam is generated. After that, the X-ray is sent through an object, which is held by a manipulator. We'll talk about that later. And, and at the end, we obviously get the detector that measures the image. So this is a more close-up view of our laser plasma interaction chamber. So uh, this is the laser plasma accelerator in itself. Uh, the chamber dimensions are here, about 75 by 60 by 40, 45 centimeter cube. Uh, it contains all the main parts, the a parabolic mi mirror to focus the beam, the gas jet, which is here, and also the tantalum converter in order to convert into X-ray the beam. So it contains also uh, motorized optics in order to fully control the alignment of the system from the outside. And we also put, put in this module uh, a lot of diagnostic, for example, in order to uh, measure the beam's pointing, beam, beam pointing stability, sorry, and the image, the beam quality at the focus point. On the right corner here, you can see a backside view of our installation. So. The chamber is just here on this breadboard. You can see the beam goes in here, and this is the manipulator that will later uh, hold the objects that you want to radiographize. So uh, this manipulator was done by our partners, uh, PEI. It's a precise uh, mechanical positioner, but for heavy objects. So uh, it enables movements of the object along four different axes. So we have obviously the free uh, space, uh, direction of space. And we have also one, uh, the possibility to move the, uh, the object uh, along a, a rotation axis, along the vertical axis. Yes. So this manipulator can also be remotely controlled from the control room. Uh, and you can see here a picture of the machine. So it's quite heavy, quite big. Uh, this is the reason why in our facility we are working at a beam height of 1.6 meters. This is because of uh, this manipulator, which is very bulky. So one note also, uh, as you can see here, we can displace, uh, we can move the manipulator along the propagation of the beam on a large scale. This is important because uh, you want your uh, non-destructive testing imaging to adapt to, uh, to either small objects or big objects. So basically you move the objects along this axis. Uh, so the last part of the chain is the, det the detector. So to detect the X and gamma beams, we are using here a flat panel system. So this is pretty close to a CCD detector as you have uh, inside a scintillator, okay, that reacts to the incoming light and then a matrix of detector that measure the emitted light by the scintillator. So this flat panel uh, has a pixel dimension about 200 micrometers, 
And the active area uh, of it is around 40 by 40 centimeters squared. So you can see here a top view of the system. Uh, one thing which is in interesting with this type of numerical detector is that we can pulse process the image. And for example, uh, from a sequence of 2D images, we can do uh, easily some 3D reconstruction uh, by taking different image with different rotation angle. So at the end, what we are aiming for is to rebuild a 3D model of the object that includes the different defects and cracks that we saw in it. So now I will, I'd like to talk about maybe some um, side subjects of it, of this installation. First one uh, is radiation safety. So obviously in our case, uh, we benefit from uh, a room of the LOA which was uh, designed for exactly uh, uh, for exactly this, meaning having a laser plasma accelerator in it. But as you can see here, we are shooting towards the chicken of protection, which is a, which which was a bit tricky. So we had to design new protection uh, in order to protect protect us from X-ray, but also neutrons. So this calc those calculation has been done uh, with the Flucker software. Uh, what you can see on the right is um, a column map of the equivalent dose rate in microsieverts per hour. So this is, uh, this is equivalent to say it is the amount of energy um, filling by a human per kilogram per hour. So obviously this study was very interesting for us because um, we realized that electrons are not a problem as they are deflected Towards the, towards the wall, the concrete walls. X-ray also are very, uh, propagates only in one direction, which is good, but in our, in our facility, we are generating a lot of neutrons that goes everywhere, so you need to protect from it. And we protect ourselves with, uh, by using plastic. So the last part I want to talk about is our, the work that we are doing with the LOA uh, around a software platform. We, we, we want to develop, uh, and we are developing, uh, a simulation software that takes every step of our uh, facility into account. Meaning that uh, the software right now is taking as an input the various laser parameters and also the gas jet parameters, and is, ab is able to give us uh, an estimated image of the object that we want to see. So this, full, this platform simulates, of course, the laser plasma interaction, but also the, the response of the object to the beam, the physics that can, hap that can occur inside, and also the response of the detector. So with this platform, of course, we want to better understand the physics and in the end, having better images, but we want also to use it uh, to increase uh, our ability to detect defects and cracks that can be difficult to see in an image that is usually noisy and with uh, a very small contrast. So uh, to finish, uh, just uh, we, I would like just to talk about uh, the future. So. We are almost ready to shoot. We are waiting for a last part in our laser chain. So we are aiming to, in the last quarter of 2018, to get the laser to its, up to its nominal performance, meaning 400 millijoule, 35 femtosecond pulses at 10 hertz on the target. And uh, by 2019, we are hoping to do, to do the first shot with real objects, to, do some f to take some first images, uh, from objects given by industrial partners. So on that year, we are hoping to get the first experimental performance of our, uh, our non-destructive testing platform. And finally, also validate uh, once and for all the numerical platform that we build. On the future uh, for this platform, uh, we will uh, launch a study also to make this laser plasma accelerator transportable uh, because if you look today at linear accelerators, they are already transportable. So to make our source uh, competitive with 
linear accelerators, we have to make it transportable. And so it seems reasonable as the laser can be very compact, several meters uh, footprint at least, and the interaction chamber is also very small. So it can be easily put in a truck and be uh, sent on site uh, to a client. And uh, so this is a more uh, long-term prospects. Uh, as you may have seen on my previous slide, there is one weakness to uh, a laser plasma accelerator that is, uh, yeah, on a laser plasma accelerators for non-destructive testing. And the weakness is, is the flux, the photon flux that we are generating. Uh, it is far below what we can ach achieve with uh, line accelerators. So on this graph, what you have is the total photon flux uh, and on the abscess, the energy of the beam. So the green and red curve are uh, curves obtained with uh, LINAC accelerators, a 60 mV one and a 90 mV one with source size of 0 0.5 millimeters and three millimeters. And the curve, the blue curve here and this curve here corresponds to flux obtained with a laser plasma accelerator. So we can see that going from one hertz and 10 hertz, this good, it is good, but we are still far below the LINAC uh, flux. And so, as in the, in the previous talk, we are also demanding for a higher repetition rate uh, laser system with a 10 terawatt uh, peak power. So, because it would be the only way to get in the future uh, to obtain the same flux as LINAC accelerator. And this is important because uh, if you don't have the same flux, it means that you would take longer to take you, you take more time to, to obtain the same images with, with the same contrast. So I have finished. Uh, thank you for your attention.